Yeah, when I first thought to do this, I didn't know how much I'd have to talk about, and it turns out it's quite a lot of stuff. Um, so I apologize if, if I rattle through some of this, but I'll try to uh, at least, I don't know, stop at a couple of interesting points. But I don't know, for the, for the benefit of those who are sort of watching this, uh, to get a bunch of resources, I've front-loaded with, with loads of links, and those who are watching in the future on YouTube and don't want to watch any more, <laughs> uh, like and subscribe. Um, that, the last link on that page is also basically a page full of links, a getting started page. Some of them are the same, uh, some of them are different, but there are loads of resources if you're um, you know, trying to show someone APL and uh, you want to know what's available. If you're trying to gather things together uh, to make it easily findable. Um, yeah, you might have seen me on Dialogue webinars. Um, I'm also a regular panelist on the Raycast podcast. I actually recorded this week's episode on Tuesday, um, and we were talking about this exact subject. And also, I heard that the uh, competition winners heard about the competition through it, so uh, you're welcome. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel where I get to play with APL, um, but also, you know, when it comes to uh, sort of things for dialogue specifically, we're trying to make, you know, we have to make things a bit more sort of uh, polished than what I've got on my personal channel. Uh, one of the things, we think about the webinars is they're kind of long and a lot to search through. So um, we started a series uh, addressing like small, very specific topics um, that are a bit more digestible. So to start with, we're focusing on the uh, development environment itself, which is obviously something that benefits from like a, a visual presentation. Um, however, we are also for webinars realized that um, what you can do on YouTube is, is pop timestamps in, in the description and then YouTube will uh, give you a sort of ability to hover over the timeline and see subheadings of the, of the sections. So we're also trying to go back in time and, and take the most useful longer videos and, and make them easier to, to navigate. Um, I'm not the only one doing APL media and training stuff at Dialog. Um, yeah, a good number of people are. So this is actually uh, our intern, Nathaniel, uh, spearheaded this. He's doing lots of great work on, on APL tools, but he also had the idea to make a, an APL blog aggregator. So if you're interested in, you know, what other people are writing about APL, this is a place, apl.news, where you can actually find um, a lot of those things collected, which is quite nice. And I love the, I love the title, don't you? <laughs> I think that's great. And of course, it wouldn't be a media, dialogue media presentation without mentioning Adam, who obviously does loads of stuff on the internet. Just quickly, this one is um, every week uh, doing programming challenges online. So it's actually based on the phase one problems of previous competitions. And doing one a week means you know the one that's coming up next week. So you can spend the week trying to do that. And then on the Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, approximately UK time, um, they'll discuss the solutions. And then Adam will sort of collect that up, package it up, and uh, put it as a video on his YouTube channel as well. Uh, so that's happening in the APL Orchard, um, which a lot of people are aware of, and a lot of people come and find us through. Um, it might look like the activity's down a bit, and I guess that's true. I think in large part, it's just that the sort of uh, array language implementation discussions, some of the more hardcore technical things, um, have sort of uh, migrated on to the Discord server instead. So this is kind of a bit more of a popular platform, I think, um, than the Stack Exchange chat. So, but you know, whether you find those conversations intimidating or not, the APLers that are on there are, you know, absolutely love to answer any of the questions that you might have at any level. Um, and the subreddit is also a decent aggregator for, you know, things that are happening in the APL community. So you can see we're trying to, you know, plant some plant some apple seeds around. And uh, on that note. Yeah, uh, as Gidda mentioned, I think at the beginning of the week, one of the sort of benefits actually of, uh, of you know, what happened the last couple of years is forcing us online and to do events online. And while meeting people here has actually been incredibly invaluable and meeting you face to face has been amazing, um, I guess logistically it's just difficult for a lot of people, especially the types of people we're targeting who don't maybe have the funds to, to fly over here. So. We're going to continue having you know, online events where, where there can be a much larger, larger and broader audience. Uh, and I know, I don't know, at least a couple of people who I might target, but 
Uh, if you've got a story or a use case that you think will be particularly appealing to people who are you know, not yet APLers, then um, you know, please get in touch. Uh, outside of dialogue only things, you know, um, Rodrigo, who you saw his fantastic presentation this week, uh, has gone to what's this functional conf. That was also remote this year. I don't know if they're going to continue doing it remotely or, uh, or do some in person. And also, Josh and Morton uh, went on a tour uh, of, the North, of North America to a couple of meetups there. Um, and Connor Herkstra, who I think you've heard mentioned a couple of times, uh, he's been pretty invaluable for us in terms of spreading the word to the sort of uh, a programming language enthusiasts and people who are trying to get into programming. And maybe they're sort of looking around because there's so many languages and trying to pick and choose uh, what's there. When he does these comparison videos, they get a decent number of views because I guess people like to see that uh, things compared together. Um, but the, his talk, this is his talk from the Toronto and New York meetups that happened this year. He re-recorded it and put it on YouTube. Uh, and also, uh, you know, people were able to physically go to user meetings this year, which is also really great. Not everything's uh, happening online, which is, you know, it's nice to get both. And then, you know, so those are the things we're kind of actively involved in or, or quite well aware of, but sometimes something, it's hard to tell, um, you know, to what extent, it's really having a benefit, but sometimes something just pops up out the ground and, and we're like, oh, we didn't, you know, we didn't instigate this. What's going on? Uh, a little while ago, Jeremy Howard, who's um, one of the main people involved in an online data science learning platform called Kaggle, uh, and also a very popular AI framework called Fast AI, um, he tweeted at us just saying, well, he was trying to teach his daughter and his daughter's friend mathematics, in particular, I think arithmetic series and sequences, uh, maybe geometric too, in a maths lesson. He said it was the first time um, his first explanation just fell flat on its face. And that was also trying to use the traditional sigma notation. So then he kind of changed tack. He is a programmer. So then he tried with uh, Python list comprehensions. And then later on, you know, again, we don't know how uh, how he decided this, but he tried with APL and said, said that he loved it much more than, than the other approaches. Um, and that led on to eventually him starting his own APL study group um, that we were not, in, not really involved in, but it was really interesting to follow along. And all of those sessions are recorded as well. You can find them on his YouTube channel. Um, one thing I want to mention is, you know, there's an issue a little bit with the fact that there's so many great resources about learning APL, but um, there's not as much stuff that exists sort of, to sort of tie concepts together. Sometimes it can be hard to figure out where you need to look to find the thing that, uh, you know, the answer to the, to the question you have. And so inevitably when people go out and, and learn stuff on their own, there are a few gaps. Um, but thankfully for us, Adam's doing his due diligence. And you can usually see in the comments that he's, he's gone through and, and put extra, uh, you know, Things that, they, things that they would have missed. He's filling even more gaps, not just the language gaps. Um, Paradigm Conf, Adam mentioned Connor's presentation there, but we were also, they also reached out to us um, to do some judging for the problems that they had. So, you know, we're really happy to be not the only ones running a problem-solving competition involving APL. And uh, yeah, as Gitta mentioned before, um, we've done some teaching of APL, and we've, uh, you know, I've been working with Adam, Rodrigo, and others uh, on developing uh, training materials, um, yeah, that, that uh, are easily available. Well, all our stuff is available, and uh, really excited um, by the description of Ray's book as well. I think that's going to be an absolutely valuable asset here. Um, so. We were, we were yeah, teaching um, some new, uh, new APLers, and typically a lot of these introductory courses have been like a, a five-day sort of crash course where you just sort of info dump a load of stuff uh, on, on the students. So, you know, we decided to take a bit more time, um, and I took a lot of those materials, tried to cover the same span of things, which also possibly turned, up, you know, turned out to be too much. But... Uh, you know, I tried to expand on the materials that were there and uh, add, in particular, exercises, which are the most important part. And that sort of eventually manifested into uh, this site, which is course.dialog.com. Um, but to be honest, I think 
you know, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a kind of rework of the first third because I wasn't massively pleased about uh, exactly how everything got introduced. Luckily, because we were giving the course, we were able to adapt and use other resources and, and examples to, to sort of scaffold around people's understanding. Um, but the original idea was to have an introduction with so, you know, very little fluff, just like, here's the stuff, uh, let's get started and we can and discuss the things as we go. I think it needs a bit more of an introduction. However, you know, people have, have been shown this, we tried to, tried to use it. The actual origins of it were uh, December 2019. Uh, Adam and myself went to a few secondary schools to try out the materials. Um, but when people have come into the Discord channel asking, you know, I don't really know anything, I haven't seen anything much, I've just heard of APL, where can I go to try something out? Uh, Adam did point them this way. And sometimes you get a response like this that says, oh, that, that was actually really quite easy. Um, so, so where's the rest? And I think, you know, not necessarily um, on purpose, but I've, we've uh, got something along the lines of a litmus test for you know, someone getting started with APL. If you do the first couple of things here and you say, oh, that was really easy, um, then probably I recommend you go and read Stefan Kruger's book, um, which is, you know, a fairly fast-paced introduction, but it uh, introduces the concepts really well. It's also incredibly modern APL-oriented, right? Everything's, you know, it's got latest features and everything like this, leading axis orientation, the rank operator. Um, so it's maybe not appropriate for like all types of audiences who, you know, are training APLers, especially those who want to work on existing systems that maybe don't use these uh, features, but it's really excellent for that scenario. On the other hand, uh, if you find the concepts are being introduced too quickly in the course and, uh, and you're getting a bit lost, although I intend to put more scaffolding around that anyway, um, of course you can go back and see the, the explanations and examples and exercises in Mastering Dialog APL. Um, the thing about Mastering Dialog APL is uh, it's fairly, fairly dated by now. It was version 12.1 when the uh, book was published and a lot of uh, really useful language features have been introduced since then. So Rodrigo has been spending quite a lot of time um, trying to rework and update and modernize um, Mastering Dialog APL, and he's also adapting it into an ebook. So this is at mastering.dialog.com. Uh, but while it's not complete, you know, the PDF does you know, cover uh, all of the language features and also, I guess, the last third of the book or so is GUI stuff. Um, and then uh, something else which you know, people sometimes um, forget about, but it's actually really well liked, is tutorial.dialog.com, the Zark APL tutor. Um, it's a little bit of a long introduction for the types of people who would find the, the course easy, but uh, people really love the, the dialogue, as in uh, conversation <laughs> introductions, um, and the way that the concepts are introduced and, and uh, built up over time. The only issue, I guess, is the system is a bit old. Uh, it, the website looks a bit old. That's not the worst problem. I mean, underneath it's this one APL workspace. It's got amazing features of like uh, interactive problem sets, but the way it's coded in there is nigh on impossible to extend or adapt into the future. So um, we've had the help of Andrew Sengel, uh, who you might have heard did the April APL to Lisp compiler. Um, and he's done a lot of work on ripping out the, uh, you know, gubbins of the, the way problems are described in there and putting them into a format that's going to be much easier to maintain into the future and also modernize the interface a bit. So here are plenty of uh, introductory materials uh, and I've, I've tacked on uh, Raymond Polivka's book because from the sounds of it, that's going to be an incredible resource, especially for people uh, who have never done programming before, which a lot of these... Um, well, a couple of these are not really targeted at as much. And then also, uh, on top of all this, another nice surprise was um, a student called Sergei from the University of Helsinki reached out to us and asked if we would help develop um, one of these MOOCs for APL. So this is a massively open online course. 
anyone can go to the website mooc.fi and sign up and use the courses. They're typically you know, tutorial content followed by some type of automatically verified programming problems. Um, but also, if you're a student of the university, you can actually get university credits for doing these. So we're in the progress of, uh, process of, of starting to develop that. And then the very last thing uh, I kind of want to talk about is um, uh, something that came up at the end of when we were training new APLers. Um, it's quite well expressed, I think, by Elva Bjork's quote here. Uh, but the way it came up in the training was we were kind of discussing this idea of, you know, we know that uh, APL is not super searchable language or Googleable or whatever. Um, so it's not so easy to just, you know, how do I do X in APL, although we are working on that. Um, there's a kind of a slight pride, I think, for some people in APL, this idea that, yes, but. If you learn enough of the language, which is a bit of a uh, ask at the beginning, but if you learn enough of it, then you know you can probably solve the thing yourself, and that's true. And then she said, um, "But but that's what we need, sir. We need to get hands fastly." And that was in that was in the text chat, which is why it's uh, why why it's so short like that. And she wasn't really wrong, you know. Um, I was at, I was pleasantly kind of surprised to hear uh, Li Chi Ching say that one of the things that he solved in the competition he actually did Google the answer for and successfully found found the solution as a Stack Overflow question. So it's another incremental process, but please ask your questions um, if you can on an online forum because it means that other people in the future who have the same problem can go and find those. Um, and you know, I'm talking about other forums, but what about the dialogue forums? That's a resource that is just chock a block with, you know, questions over the years from uh, people in the APL community talking to each other. Um, but I did think for a minute because I knew that this page existed, which says about uh, how can it's Paul Mansour asking how can can you run dialogue on a Chromebook? You, you can. It's not officially supported, and there's conversation about that. Um, but I was also wondering like. Can you search for stuff? Does our for, do our forums come up on, you know, can you search well? And it turns out that Google wasn't really indexing our forums at all, uh, which is very annoying, even if you like restrict to just the site. I know that page exists, why is it not coming up? So we investigated a little bit of that and, and finally that's uh, coming up so that you'd be able to search more there. Another, um, another issue I think slightly is tooling. And I'll try and uh, be relatively quick here, but this is um, this is a fairly you know typical thing. You've learned not too much APL, but enough that you can sort of perceive how you would solve the problem uh, if you could get the data into the workspace. But how do you do that? So here's some fairly typical data, text data in a table that you might read in from an experiment. And since it's a table, you think, um, and it's made of text. Oh yeah, quad CSV. You might be able to figure that out. And actually, you know, with a bit of effort, you can. Maybe you'd try searching apple cart. But um, that doesn't have everything, and that also is, yeah, it just doesn't have everything at, at the minute. I think that's the main issue. And some of the uh, examples are just so short that it doesn't quite cover everything that you need. So then you might try yourself, and you actually do figure it out, um, because you can, because APL's like that. But maybe you don't get you know, what's considered the optimal solution, right? So it's still the case that a lot of the times your best bet is to ask an APLer or ask a dialogue employee, what do you do? And maybe you'll get something a little bit cleaner. I don't know if this is the you know, bestest, bestest solution, but it's a bit cleaner and it's almost certainly going to be faster than what was there before. And it's really hard to figure out if you, how you should do this from our documentation as well, I find, because it's quite verbose. Uh, and a lot of stuff is you've got to scroll quite, down, quite far down to find things like the variants and things like this. So I think part of this could be addressed by having either some um, yeah, new tutorial content that kind of front loads the use cases a bit more and shows you exactly you know, the types of things you might use this for. Or maybe this can be a supplement to the help system. I know that's a bugbear of Fiona's that is called help.dialog.com, but actually it's a link to our technical documentation. But really, actually on top of that, I think people probably just want a function like this. And we almost have that in, in load text, but they don't quite do it, so maybe that's something I need to look at as well. Um, yeah, but that's, that's the kind of things, well, that have been happening in the APL 
community and some of the things I think um, we need to address. We need some more examples of practical APL and things that make it easier to use APL in practice, even if you haven't learned loads of uh, detailed stuff, you know, you haven't learned all of APL before you can start reading a CSV file, for example, um, and show that we are a really practical language for doing real things. Um, but in terms of, you know, the stuff that's been happening, I think, recently, and, and the growth we've seen in interest online, I'm probably more confident than ever when I say that I think APL is alive and well. So anyway, thanks. <laughs>